Hello, it's Felt Buzz, and I'm doing an author reading of uh, my free write story, which has no name, so I called it No Name. And uh, this is my fourth author reading for this series. Uh, I've done, done them in sets of seven, so one week at a time. And this is uh, parts 22 to 28. Part 22, comic. What the fuck are you doing? Marie whispered, pulling me out of my memories. We need to get a move on or the Shades will be back. Slug knows we're here. We need to find him before he sends creatures worse than the Shades. I shivered, trying to remember which creatures were worse than the Shades. All I remember when Marie was talking us through what we might face when we came through the portal was that I got a slap from France after one too many wisecracks. It is not funny, she said, her face stony and serious, which of course made me giggle like a schoolboy. You think you are comic, but you are not. You're as funny as death, and that's what will happen to all of us unless you pay attention. I remember making a joke about death, and Chip trying not to laugh, and Marie giving up for the day, sending us away from the laboratory in disgust. I'm sorry, Marie, they whispered, and followed her into the night. Part 23. Quota. This way, I whispered. You're going the wrong way, Marie. Are you sure? She stopped still, shining a tar torch around her at the shadows. I could hear the shades hiss as the beam of light touched them. I'm the finder of things, aren't I? I was impatient to get out of the, o the open. The shades freaked me out. I found a thing. Marie nodded and followed me as I fo her headed for a collection of buildings to the right of us. She swung the light around her to ward off the creatures. The door of the building was padlocked. No problem. Another one of my skills. I find things. I open things. I kill things. Marie went in first, and I slid in behind her, closing the door on my back. She shone the, the light around her. No sign of shades. I don't think they like buildings, she said. But there are plenty of other creatures that Slug keeps as guardians or pets that do, so tread carefully. I nodded, hoping the scary creature quota had been reached for the day. This way. I pointed at the rickety old staircase at the far end of the warehouse. He's up there. Part 24. Confirm. I remember when, back in the laboratory in Graver's basement, Marie was talking us through the various pets Slug owned. The one that terrified me most was the spider. Let me just tell you, I don't do normal sized spiders. I know they're supposedly more scared of you than you are of them, but in my experience that's just bullshit. Spiders live their lives with one sole objective, to scare the living shit out of me. So when Marie spoke about the spider, a creature that was the size of a large dog, looked like a spider but had blades for feet, I knew I wasn't going to be its friend. Conveniently, I had forgotten about the creature until we began to climb the stairs and I caught a movement of something that was the size of a big dog with flashing blades for legs coming towards me. I can confirm I actually pissed myself. Marie calmly shot at the thing with her gun, or at least she appeared to be calm to me. Part 25. 100 kilos of fish. The spider flipped onto his back and used its bladed feet to deflect the bullets. I would have been impressed if I wasn't so busy shitting myself and ducking to avoid the ricocheting bullets. Fuck! Maria sh shouted, clearly not as calm as I thought she was. Run away! She grabbed my hand and started to pull me down the, the stairs. I glanced over my shoulder to see the huge spider flip back onto its bladed feet. I could hear the ting 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 as the feet struck the floor as it ran towards us. At the bottom of the staircase I could see a door to the right. I pulled Marie in that direction as she followed. The door opened easily and we fell into it. Marie closed the door before the spider could reach it with its sharp knived feet. The sound of the blades as they tore into the feet was terrifying. What the fuck is that smell? Maria shout Marie shouted. I looked to Shane. I had actually soiled myself. Fish, Maria said. I looked at a pile of what must have been a hundred kilos of fish. Part 26. Uh, desperate. The pounding of the spider against the door stopped. I put my ear to the wood and I thought I could hear its bladed feet retre retreating. Maria was examining the fish. Seems fresh, she said, picking one up and looking at it in his fishy face. She sniffed it. Still smells of the sea. I nodded, my back still against the door. I didn't trust the spider. I suspected it might be back. So, he said, letting the fish pop back onto the pile to draw in its dead brothers and sisters. Finder of things, can you find us another way out of here that avoids the spider? We need to get to Slug. I nodded, trying not to look as desperate as I felt. 
I think it's that way. I pointed at the massive mountain of, mountain of fish. There's a door on the other side that leads to another staircase. Maria looked at me. Better start moving those fish then, she said, picking one up and chucking it at my head. Get your ass over here and start helping. Part 27. Earth. I dug my fair share of graves in the past. Let me tell you, it ain't my favourite job. Deep in a hole in the ground, earth all around you, in your hair, on your skin, in your mouth. Well, I found shoveling fish is a damn sight worse than that. Especially when you don't have a shovel. Maria and I must have spent an hour throwing wet fish from one side of the room to another. At first I enjoyed the soggy splat sound as the fish flopped onto the floor, but after a minute or two my enthusiasm and my amusement waned, and I found myself feeling sick. The smell of fish was never in my top three odours, but let me tell you, if I never smell another haddock in my life it will be too soon. Eventually the door I knew was under the fish was revealed. It was padlocked obviously, but I had it open in second, seconds and we slipped through, Maria pointing her gun into the darkness in front of her. Part 28. Delegation. The darkness seemed to suck at the, at the light from Maria's torch. The beam became thin and we could barely see what was ahead of us. She swung the torch around, her gun following the pinpoint of light. Fuck, I can't see a thing. You go in front. I hesitated. I was never a fan of delegation, particularly if the person delegating wasn't me and the person they were delegating to was me. I shrugged and moved into the, in front of her. The light from my torch fared slightly better, for a second anyway, and then it was too. Then it too was sucked away into nothing. Suddenly, we found ourselves in total darkness. Should we go back? Maria asked, her voice shaking. I looked over my shoulder. Darkness, not even a slither of light from where the doorway should have been. I don't think so. I said, "I'm the finder of things. Put your hands on my shoulder and follow me." I felt her hand on one shoulder and the heavy metal of the gun on the other one. I closed my eyes and took a step forward. And that's the end of part 28. Uh, I will do another author reading for next week. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. If you didn't, tough. That's all you get in. <laughs> uh, there are all of the parts are available. If you just find my latest free write, you should have a list of all of them and you can pick your point of starting wherever you want to. Uh, anyway, follow the Free Right House and help grow the Free Right House. If you haven't, do so. If you have, thank you. I love you. And don't forget, steam on. <laughs>